In this class, we are going to take a look at the reaction of Grignard reagent with ketones. Let's see what happens when Grignard reagents react with ketones. Remember in the previous video, we learned the reaction between Grignard reagent and aldehydes. In this one, we are learning what will happen when a Grignard reagent reacts with a ketone. Remember, as I said earlier in the previous video, a Grignard reagent is made up of an alkyl group, magnesium metal, and a halogen. This is the general formula for Grignard reagents, where R represents an alkyl group. Mg stands for magnesium, and X stands for a halogen. So we can formulate Grignard reagent on our own. We can take any alkyl group of our choice and take any halogen of our choice. So if I have methyl as my alkyl group, that is my R, attached to magnesium, I can decide to choose bromine as a halogen. Any of the halogens can be picked. You can use iodine, you can use chlorine. Any of the alkyl groups can be used. You can use propyl, you can use ethyl. Now this is an example of a Grignard reagent. And this is methyl magnesium bromide. Can I swear I decide to use ethyl magnesium iodide as iodine? This is also a Grignard reagent. I can still say methyl magnesium chloride. This is another example of a Grignard reagent. Methyl magnesium chloride. Now let's see what happens when they react with a ketone. Remember, ketones are those organic compounds that have a carbonyl functional group positioned inside the compound. Let's take for instance, if I have C, 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 take a look. I have this. If I have my carbonyl carbon located inside, this is one, two, three. In this case, this is the carbonyl functional group. This is what we call the carbonyl functional group. C double bond O. Now, when the carbonyl functional group is located inside, as you can see, this is outside, this is outside, but this is inside. When the carbonyl functional group is located inside, the compound is a ketone. But when the carbonyl functional group is located outside, something like this, when it is outside, in front, the compound is an aldehyde. So both aldehydes and ketones share the same type of functional group. The major structural difference between them is that the functional group of an aldehyde carries a hydrogen atom, while the functional group of a ketone, that is the carbonyl functional group of a ketone, does not have a hydrogen atom. Another example is that the carbonyl functional group of an aldehyde has only one acute group attached to it. While the carbonyl functional group of a ketone has two acute groups bonded to it. Now, let's see what happens when a ketone reacts with a Grignard reagent. Let's write the general formula for the reaction. If I have a ketone, this is an acute group of the ketone, and this is the carbonyl functional group of the ketone, this is the second acute group. It can be methyl and methyl. It can be propyl and ethyl. It can be any of the acute groups. Now, this is the ketone. When it reacts with a Grignard reagent, this is our Grignard reagent. I'm using R prime prime to differentiate the acute groups. The R here is the one on the ketone. R prime is also on the ketone. But my R prime prime is the acute group on the Grignard. I have my magnesium, then I have my halogen as X. I'm using the formula now. When a Grignard reagent reacts to take it all in the presence of eta in an acidic medium, what happens? The same thing that happens for those of aldehydes is what happens here. Disconnect the acyl group present in the Grignard reagent. Attach it to the carbonyl functional group of the ketone. 
then protonate the oxygen here. That is converted to OH. So my product for this will be, if I bring down the ketone, R, C, double bond, O, R, prime down the ketone. What happens is that the acute group present in the Greek now, that is this, will be disconnected from the Greek now and bonded to the carbonyl functional group of the ketone. And then the oxygen in the carbonyl group will be converted to OH, that is protonation of the oxygen. This is the product of this reaction, plus our usual thing, MgXOH. This is the product of the reaction between a Grignard reagent and a ketone. Now look at this. You discover that in the ketone, there are two acyl groups attached to it, to the carbonyl group. Now when the product is formed, you are now having three acyl groups. Why are they three? This third one came from the Greek lab. Now that there are three acyl groups bonded to the carbon carrying the OH, this alcohol belongs to what we call the tertiary class. So the class of this alcohol is tertiary. Three degree, why is it three degree? Because there are three acyl groups bonded to the carbon carrying the alcohol functional group. So you can see that in the previous video, when Grignard reagent reacts with an aldehyde, a secondary alcohol is produced. But when Grignard reagent reacts with a ketone, a tertiary alcohol is produced. Without this here, I'm going to have this ketone is here. Now, disconnect the acyl group from here, attach it to the ketone as usual. This is the acyl group from the Greek lab. Then, remove one of the bonds of the oxygen and attach the magnesium halide, MgX. This is the product you are going to form with, without the presence of the acid medium. You will have this. But in the presence of the acid medium, this complex here will be converted to OH. Now let's see examples of this using real compounds. After writing your ketone, disconnect the acute group from the Greek lab, which is C2H5, disconnect it from the Greek lab and bond it to the carbonyl functional group of the ketone. The here, my acute group here is C2H5, that is ethyl. Now the next thing to do is to protonate the oxygen. Add a proton to the oxygen, which is a hydrogen atom. Remove one of the bonds and put H. So this is alcohol. Remember the other product plus Mg, here is chlorine, then OH. So these are the products of the reaction between this propanol and this Grignard reagent. Remember? This is a tertiary alcohol because I have one, two, three. Three acyl groups are bonded to the functional group carbon. So this is a tertiary alcohol, which is three degree. One, two, three. Three acyl groups. All right, let's look at the second reaction and see what the product will look like. Here I have a ketone in the cyclic form. This is my ketone functional group. Remember, there is a carbon here carrying this. Now, this is my Grignard reagent. This is ethyl. Ethyl can be written in this form CH3, CH2. Can also be compiled together like C2H5, C2H5. So, this or this, both are the same. Now, this is ethyl magnesium bromide reacting with this ketone. What will happen? Draw your ketone as usual this way. This is the ketone. Now, disconnect the acute group from the Greek lab and bond it to the carbonyl functional group of the ketone. This is the carbonyl functional group here. This is the carbon here. Disconnect the acute group and bond it here. I can put it here, C2H5. Now, protonate the oxygen. Add a H to this oxygen here. Then it becomes OH. Remember to remove one of the bonds 
to maintain four bonds around carbon. Now, this is the product for this case. Plus Mg, I'm using bromine here, BrOH. That is the answer. Now, let's give the answer to the last equation here. Now, all I need to do here is to locate my carbonyl functional group. As you can see, it is here. This is the carbon carrying the O. So this is like this. It's actually like this. So you can see this is the carbonyl functional group. So, but let's leave it the way it was given, like this. So I will carry this ketone, the product, the answer here, let me write it here. Carry this ketone, CH3, into 3, C, CH2, CO, CH3. Now, I will disconnect the acute group here. The acute group here is C3H7, that is propyl. Disconnect it from the Grignard reagent and attach it to the carbonyl functional group, that is C3H7. Now, protonate the oxygen at the H to make it OH to become this. I have this, remember it is on this carbon. Then I have my CH3 here. So this is the product of this reaction. Then plus the other, which is MgIOH. And this is the product of the reaction. Remember, this is a tertiary alcohol because we have this OH on top of this carbon. We have this, we have this. How many acute groups are bonded to this carbon? One, two, the whole of this, three. So this is the product of this reaction. And that is the answer. Thank you for watching this video. Click the next video to see more on this. Thank you for watching. And do not forget to subscribe to my channel.